One of the most debated questions currently in the Disney Cars community is why Mattel hasn't released a crashed slash damaged version of Lightning McQueen from that iconic yet heart-wrenching scene in Cars 3. So as you can see, today we'll be taking a look at a custom of that very crash damaged Lightning McQueen from Cars 3. I'm super happy about it. I got it a few months ago and I've been so waiting to review it for you guys. So we'll get into that in a couple moments here. But not only will we be reviewing this amazing custom, but we're also going to be delving into the history of damaged cars in terms of the Mattel. Disney diecast line because of a couple reasons here Mattel I feel has always been battling with the idea do we release damaged cars should we are they too cruel and brutal to show because yeah a lot of kids are going to buy and see them so what do we do so let's just dive right in here starting with the king being the first damaged racer slash character out of the entire diecast line. Now, of course, essentially in Cars 1, his scene reflects McQueen's scene in Cars 3, which we'll talk about here in a couple moments as well. He was a main character in the movie that people looked up to. He wasn't a villain or anything like that. And he took a beating because of Chick Hicks. It wasn't even like a natural cause, like his tire blew out. It was you know, fall play. And so Mattel still released him. They seem to have no drawbacks at this time. And then like a little bit less than a year later, they released Damage the King again, but as a lenticular moving eye release in a three pack. So that was it for the King. Then he's become quite a rare release now, but also in 2010, as you guys know, something pretty insane happened. And Stu Scatter Shields is going to bring that insanity to us here with Race Damage Mood Springs, one of the most iconic and popular releases out of the entire Disney Cars line that now has turned into also one of the rarest ones. You can't find this guy for probably $200 in the package anymore. And that is just ridiculous because he was a basic release. So another damaged car that Mattel did from an iconic scene in the movie, of course, the beginning of Cars 1 at the Motor Speedway of the South Race. A phenomenal release, super well detailed and super accurate to the movie. But that accuracy is what may cause the problem for the next few releases we're going to talk about here. And because this scene here and this car are so closely connected, I mean, they look identical there. And same thing with the King. It really does reflect the cruelness and just heart-wrenching nature of these damage scenes because you're essentially, you know, if cars are supposed to symbolize people, this is a society of cars instead of a society of people, you're basically releasing toy versions of bleeding and just all around injured people. You know, that's essentially what these are. They're injured cars. It's not just, you know, I don't know, you're driving a car as a person and it gets a dent. Like in Hot Wheels, you know, if they release, I don't know, a, a damaged version of the USS Enterprise or whatever, they've done that before from Star Trek. And that's different because it's a vehicle people use. It's not like a living, breathing thing, unlike these cars here. So also in 2010, Mattel had planned a release for Doc Hudson damaged and those stall and leakless. Other iconic scenes, of course, Doc was in that newspaper and then shown more prominently damaged in Cars 3. But they were canceled. That's right, Mattel actually canceled some of the first releases ever in terms of the diecast line, and three of them were damaged releases. Coincidence, or are they actually toning back? Have they gotten some news, some allegations, some maybe, I don't know, other people in high places saying, you really shouldn't be releasing these because they are just not, you know, meant to be sold to, you know, our audience. One of our audiences is kids. One of our audiences is adults and collectors. But one of our audiences is, in fact, kids. And is this something they really should be seeing and wanting to buy? I mean, is that what we want to raise our generation to be? So definitely something interesting to think about there with those cancellations. But what's even more interesting in my opinion is also in 2010, a third thing happens and that is Rescue Squad Mater Cars Tunes Diecast come out. 
Well, the first being burnt Lightning McQueen. So not we're not there yet. We're not to crash or damage yet, but burns are pretty severe as well. I mean, as you can see here, McQueen is pretty burnt up. I like this release. I love the expression. It's very, again, accurate to the car's tune short. But again, is it a little too brutal for our younger audiences to be releasing a burnt version of a car from kind of an intense scene? So what Mattel did was they kind of backtracked on that, renamed the car Soaked Lightning McQueen, changed the expression, and added a bunch of water droplets. This was a slight controversy back in 2010 when they did this. I was only nine years old, but I definitely heard a lot about it when they made this whole change. Because, I mean, really, this is such a minor variation between the two. I don't think they would have done anything if they, you know, were told, you know, not to by some other, you know, entity. You could also see they toned back on the burns, even though the back half of the queen is still entirely black. You could definitely see on the spoiler how they toned it back. So that was another interesting kind of questionable thing that occurred in 2010. However, in 2011, everything seemed to go right back to where they were in 2009 as Mattel released a damaged version of Rod Torque Redline from probably one of the most brutal scenes out of the entirety of the Cars franchise, maybe just ahead of Lightning McQueen's crash itself. Of course, this is the death of Rod Torque Redline at this point stage here and he's pretty damaged not super damaged like the king was but you know after this scene here he's presumed to die i mean that's how insane that scene is i'm sorry if i'm taking too much time here explaining this backstory but i think some of you guys would find it interesting but if not you guys can for sure skip ahead to the review of mcqueen but anyways they released him without any hesitations However, though, they have not released Damage Doc or Rod Torque Redline, nor have they even released Rod Torque Redline himself, which I still find a little strange as well. And then they took a break for a long, long, long time. And they still really haven't released any damaged cars, even though there being a huge demand for damaged Piston Cut Racers. I did a video like a year and a half ago on a bunch of damaged Piston Cut Racer customs that are supposed to resemble, you know, the crash in the first Cars movie. And of course, they're done by Four Wheel Drive 7. I'll put the link to my review in the description below, along with the card suggestion in the top right-hand corner if you're interested. But yeah, Mattel knows what their fans want. As we increasingly find out here as they release Next Gens and other racers and stuff like that, they know we like the Piston Cut racers and they know you know, it's my most viewed video. Come on. It has nearly 2 million views, the Damage Racers video. And Mattel even could take from Cars 3 with the next gen crash at the Florida 500. So essentially what I'm trying to say here is that Mattel is not releasing damaged cars anymore. They do not want to stick their toes in that water anymore of questionableness, of potentially, you know, hurting somebody's feelings or... I don't know, leading toward a tendency of violence. I don't know. I'm just pointing some things out there. You guys can draw your own conclusions. But the last thing I will say about the matter is that Mattel, although may be hesitant to release a crash version of Damage of McQueen, not all companies are. Whoever makes these Ushis here, they released a crash damage version of Lightning McQueen. Now, Ushis are like little squishy things. They're like mini racers, but squishy. And they actually had this whole line, as you can see right there. They mapped it all out. They had rare ones. And in fact, Crash Damage McQueen was one of them. So very strange here. Lots of crazy developments over the last 11 years in terms of damaged stuff in the Cars line. But my opinion is that Mattel will never release a damaged version of a car ever again, whether it be McQueen, The King, Doc, or even just a random Piston Cut racer. And... It's just because it's hard to see. I mean, if you release that, you're kind of giving into a tendency of violence. And I know I may be seeing a little too much into it, but that's just how companies think. And that's how the world works nowadays. Things have changed over the last 11 years here. And a lot of that change took place actually in 2010. But either way, though, I wanted one because even though it is heart wrenching, it's a cool 
piece to have in your collection from one of the most iconic scenes of you know all the Cars movies here. So without any further ado, let's get into the review here of Damaged Lightning McQueen. Now, I just want to start off by thanking Al Isma for making this custom. I didn't buy it from him, but he sold it to somebody else who sold it to somebody else or something, something, something. And I was in the market and I got it from a friend in Mexico. So I don't know how it all worked out to be completely honest with you, but Al Isma, thank you. You did a tremendous job. I mean, let's admit you had to use three Lightning McQueens to do this. You had to use McQueen with shovel to get that mouth plate there. You had to use finish line Lightning McQueen to get those rims in the back. And of course, you also had to use a Rusty's Lightning McQueen. So absolutely tremendous job. I mean, look, let's just take a moment here. Rusty's McQueen is not a segmented car. He doesn't have a mouth plate. So you had to actually saw through the first bumper there at McQueen and also saw off half the spoiler. That's tremendous work. Definitely one of the best customizers out there right now. He does phenomenal stuff. I have a few other of his pieces like the damaged dock, who I will be doing a video on in the future as well. So definitely stick around for that. Mattel's not going to release them, but thank God for customizers, right guys? So anyways, diving into the review here, McQueen has his eyes shut. Obviously, in pain again it's hard to think about and really see in the movie as well but that just is what it is really great job though with the expression you can see just the cringe and pain and the just grimace in his face right now because he's taking such a beating i mean in the movie his crash seemed worse than the king's just because of how long the movie just focused on it. I mean, he kept tumbling and tumbling and tumbling there. And we'll put a few pictures on the screen right now to show that. So then you guys can make the call on how accurate this version of Damage McQueen is. I think it's spot on, to be completely honest with you. I think it's absolutely perfect. Nothing I would have done differently. But anyways, throughout the entire body here, he has the tarmac asphalt marks on him, the blackness. He has a dent there on the hood. The Rusties is almost invisible here with all the markings he has. I mean, just a phenomenal job. The wheels are all bent and twisted up. His axle and base there. He's got all sorts of scratches. Again, tarmac asphalt markings here throughout his entire body. Scrapes, just so realistic too. Now, since he took those rims from the finish line version of McQueen, he had to put the yellow trim on there to match the Rusty's version. Just a phenomenal job. So these are even bent up as well. You can see how he did that. The window bar here is kind of bashed in. You can see his frame is all messed up. Some detailing there on the roof. And then of course, the phenomenal job here in actually sawing through the spoiler there. Because in the movie, it was half attached. And in artwork that we've seen of him, in books and stuff, you can see that this is how it happened. On the back here, he's got some more markings, although it's probably one of the cleaner spots of all of him. The spoiler is still very firm, though. It's still metal. But this whole part here is super beat up there. You can see the... Fresh cut metal, how it came straight off. That is just terrible. <laughs> but in a good way, of course. Great detailing. Just soak in the detail on this custom. Definitely one of my favorite customs in my collection. Despite, you know, again, it being from a gruesome scene in the movie. It's just a nice piece to have. It's our favorite character, right? That we saw, you know, take a tumble, to say the least. But it's still... A conversational piece and I'm happy to have it in my collection. I know a lot of you guys would like to have it as well because it's so much and frequently commented on my video. Why doesn't Mattel make a damage the king or queen or whatever? McQueen the king, same thing. Why doesn't Mattel make a damage doc? Are they going to? And I always say the same exact thing, you know, Mattel probably is not going to do this anymore due to the gruesome nature of it. But anyways, guys, before we end off the video here, who did it better? You have Rusty's Lightning McQueen here and his damaged counterpart. You have the King and his damaged counterpart. You have Mood Springs and his damaged counterpart. And you also have Doc and his damaged counterpart. 
Lots of damaged cars. 50% was made by Mattel here, and then 50% was made by Al Isma. I know a lot of people are big fans of Race Damage Mood Springs, who I actually will be reviewing soon for a Throwback Thursday episode. I'm pretty excited about it. I haven't reviewed him in years, so I think it'd be great to bring him back for a little review. And same thing with Doc, but he'll just be reviewed in a regular video because he's not really throwback. You can see how he had to cut the trunk open there and the hood. And yeah, again, I definitely recommend checking out my video on those damaged racers. You know, there's even a damaged apple. How cool is that? Looks like damaged apple almost had his spoiler taken off too, but looks like it went more to his back fender and bumper there. So yeah, my conclusion on this all is Mattel is done with damaged cars. They are just too gruesome for them, which is definitely understandable. I totally see why they would not release them or want to release them. And that's why we have customizers out there. And in all honesty, it's not that hard to make a damaged racer, I would assume. You probably just take a hammer and just start bashing him, I guess. Uh, despite the, again, gruesome nature of that, it does work. So thank you guys so much for watching. We're bringing Race Division 017 here for the rescue of Lightning McQueen. Of course, Tiny Lugsworth, Stu Scattershields, and Super Chase Morgan Martins. They all are from Race Division 17, if you guys did not know that. Pretty cool stuff. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this review of this amazing damaged Lightning McQueen custom. Let me know your thoughts on the whole reason why they may not release him. Or maybe if you do think they will release him, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I will see you guys in a future video very, very soon. Of course, quality content coming at you on a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and sometimes Sunday basis. So at least three videos a week. Usually four though. I'll see you guys maybe tomorrow then for a video. I'm not sure. Bye now. Disney docket, whoa, 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 slow it down there. You are being completely inaccurate when you say that Mattel took a break from damage releases after 2011 until present day. That is completely inaccurate as in 2012 and 2013, Mattel had this line called the Quick Changers in which they released several damaged releases. And as you can see with these three here, the select few, they do look pretty damaged with Nigel Gearsley's eyes, his hood's all cracked, Raul's hood, his window's cracked, and of course, Grem has two bashed in doors. So what does that mean, RC Cars 5, Disney Docket? What does that mean? Just adds another layer onto the puzzle and mystery, I guess. I don't have an answer, like I said, but I wanted to show you guys this again, just so you guys have all the information. It is an interesting, you know, little add-on piece to this all, because after those cancellations, after Rod Tork Redline, then you have these, and now the hiatus, you have the Ushis release. So what's the deal? Ushis is a smaller company. Maybe they just didn't, you know, care as much as Mattel has a larger public image and reputation. Who knows what the deal is, but it's a lot to think about. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And for real now, bye, and I'll see you soon.